Hi, um, I'm in the studio today just doing a little bit of board preparation and um, this is mainly because I've been asked quite a few questions on how I prepare these boards. Really, uh, there's no huge science behind it. It is quite a simple process. Um, please don't let it worry you or delay your uh, painting experience. Um, I'm going to do a couple of different examples because uh, you don't have to do this in acrylic. There are pros and cons to using acrylics and I use different kinds of acrylics in different circumstances to get different effects. But you can also, if you're just oil painting only, you know, there's no need to go out and buy a whole set of acrylics just to put the primer down. You can stick to your oil paints and I often do that too. Um, so I'm going to crack on and prepare a couple of boards for you and hopefully answer your questions while I do it. I'm just going around the outside of the board with masking tape. It's great to just keep it clean. It gives you the option to paint it or, or add any effects that you have in mind. These are some of the um, markers that I use to uh, prepare the board. Some paint and um, paint comes in these bottles and of course you can get tubes and in the middle there you see some uh, inks they're a little bit transparent for this kind of thing though so what I've done here is just I've just drawn some lines with the acrylic markers the green and the purple I've dropped a bit of ink on and now I'm just putting some paint straight from the bottle onto the board and that's burnt sienna I wouldn't really use absolutely everything um, I would probably just use the paint, um, you know, from the bottle. That's burnt sienna, ultramarine, maybe sap green or olive green, something like that. And uh, a good old uh, um, harky brush has come out. I'm spreading the paint around. What this brush will give you is lines, textured lines, grooves in the surface, um, which is good from our perspective because we're sort of looking, well, I'm in this series of paintings, I'm looking for um, this impasto effect you might not want that you might want it smooth in which case you might want to try the aerosol cans which I'll show later I'm using the tool that uh, so many cold wax painters seem to use um, it is very handy it's getting me out of a bit of a scrape here because I've probably got too much paint in my eagerness to show everything off the danger here is to have just so much color that you move around to the point it just becomes mud and all one color and I want little bits of the blue and little bits of this burnt sienna and magenta colors to flash through um, this will be the color that you see when you use a skewer or something to scrape paint away from the impasto effect so you won't really see a lot of it wasn't quite happy with it so I've just put a little bit more of this um, sort of all a sap green I think that one is uh, straight from the bottle onto the board and uh, I'm doing a mixture of things drawing it across but I'm also just splatting it with the with the brush um, you might want to keep some white from the board uh, shining through I, I really don't for this kind of painting at the moment anyway so I don't want any white if there's going to be a light color I'll show it with paint I stopped myself just in time there before I got this kind of muddy sludge. You could really, if you wanted to, just go black all the way or burnt umber all the way, flat colour. Now, these are um, acrylic spray paints. Not really my top choice. The big advantage with them would be if you wanted a smooth surface, well, the spray paint definitely gives you that. You just have to sp uh, shake them for so long um, and they clog up eventually. And give you drops which are okay but I think life's too short to shake cans for 20 minutes at a time these little blobs that you see and here's some close-ups um, they're okay and you might find that's a happy accident but I don't really want the smooth effect here's some uh, oil bars and uh, RNF pigment sticks you can basically go down the oil route here um, and start chucking a bit of colour around. So I've just chosen two oil sticks there. I tend to draw with them once the board is primed. Now what I'm doing here, 
Um, and, <laughs> you know, I have just taken paint from my palette that had got a little bit of a skin on it um, from um, Friday. So today's Monday, so it was a few days ago. And uh, rather than bin it, it is not, I've taken the nice dark colors with a palette knife and I'm just basically spreading, spreading them around um, and trying to get little bits of the board with different colors. I kind of ran out of paint there, so I've gone back to an RF stick to, to put a bit of Prussian blue around. It is quite fun, this. You can make a mess, and if you don't like it, you can just get rid of it. You could wipe this board down with Gamsol. Um, but I'm using Gamsol right now with my trusty little hakey brush. And um, I'm dipping the brush very lightly, just so there's a suggestion of the Gamsol on the... Um, on the end of the fibers of the brush i'm just moving the paint around you know because i'm being a cheapskate and i've got um old paint on here you might find little bits of the skin go in um you can keep it there if you want it might flake off like during the painting process or you can lift it out with a palette knife um either way it's no problem and if it's been an absolute nightmare again you know just clean it up and start again i'm eliminating all of the white and try not to get it all one sludgy color remember i just want this dark um background when i scrape paint away so yeah i want my greens browns blues the paint looks really shiny and um that's because it's it's pretty liquid and it's got lots of gamsol in it or a fair bit of gamsol in it it will dry matte and flat you will see little marks with the where the hog's hair has gouged out paint. Um, the thinner the paint, the less of that you'll see. But there is a little bit of kind of body to this paint. 